God of the universe, maker of the stars. Who am I that you would know my name? Hey, 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 it's good to see you guys again. It's been uh it's been a kind of a crazy week, but we're uh running back into this thing again. And uh, at least finally, we're not all traveling or all trying to figure out something. And I hope that Mike is well rested after being in the land for so long. Uh, it's, been, it's been awesome. So, Mike, you feeling rested to do this thing? You know, th there's something about this, uh, this program, guys, that I'm so enjoying uh, that I just I start looking forward to Monday nights. And yeah. uh, we hit this button of record. And it's like, yes, here we go. And uh, I want to mm -hmm. thank those who have uh, I've run into over the last few weeks, uh, a couple of emails. I've gotten texts of uh, how important this program is becoming to them. And uh, a very special awesome. thank you to someone who actually gave a donation the other day that uh, takes care thank of you. all of our airing expenses for all the whole year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. 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 Thank That's you. awesome. Whoever did yes, that, thank, thank you. you very, very much. That's yeah. amazing. I mean, it's not a major amount of money that it takes to do this, but, uh, you know, it's just great when people That's say, awesome. you know, I want to be involved. And uh, so for those that like to be involved in, uh, you know, Exodus Roadband, uh, for Joy Doshem, you know, for our, our work with Life Assembly, uh, you know, we appreciate that. And uh, mm -hmm. we don't do it for that, but that's just, uh, you know, it's, it's just, it means a lot to us. It really does. Mm -hmm. It sure does. Absolutely. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and, and just to, you know, throw it out again for, you know, it's been a while, just anyone who wants to, you know, ask questions or get more info about any one of us, any of that kind of stuff, you can reach us at onpurpose at mail.com. I believe yeah. that's the right one, onpurpose at mail.com. Just shoot us an email. All of us can view that one. Um, so, you know, whatever you got, questions, comments, info, just you shoot an email there and we'll get back to you. I'm glad you brought that up because I have a feeling after this uh, after this topic, we're going to probably have some questions on some things because not every case for everybody is uh, the same. So mm -hmm. I'm interested to dig into this. If uh, do we have any other announcements, are we ready to well, jump you know, into this thing? Dave, with what you just said, let me let me say something. I have actually started to use this, and, and this is something you guys know. I've taught these this for a long time. I got it from reading the book by Miles Monroe. Mm -hmm. um, I actually use this as an opener with people that I meet. You know, you sit and talk with people, they're asking what you do and, you know, what kind of, uh, you know, what, what kind of job do you have, all these kind of things. And somewhere along the way, you know, when they find out, okay, I'm a speaker, I'm a pastor, I'm, you know, all these kind of crazy things, I'll actually kind of turn the conversation over to, you know, one of the things I really love to speak on is the five questions of life that everyone's asking, but nobody knows they're asking. And then I'll wait for a response. And I haven't, I haven't mm -hmm. kept the check marks anywhere. But it's amazing to me that less than 50% of the people that I say that to will ask you, actually ask what the questions are. Mm. Mm. Interesting. It, it, for me, I, I guess I'm just kind of one of those crazy people that like to ask questions of life. You know, so this is just suited for me. But mm. um, to, to have something like that thrown to you and then somebody just kind of look at you like, huh? well... You know, what is the price of tea in China? <laughs> I would say, would you, uh, I, I'm interested to see what your theory is on that with asking that kind of question. I would be wondering if it has something to do with that, just asking that question of, there are five questions in life that everyone asks that no one has the answer for. Is it not forcing them to have to take up accountability for their life at that moment, right then and there? They have to go, Oh, I someone now is confronting me with these questions. You know, I don't even want to get into that. I don't even want to even look at how I've answered that question. I'm curious what you. I would that would be my first assumption would be that. I'll actually jump in. I um, I would I would think that one maybe one theory is very basic. Where you know I think we've just kind of lost our well, and I intentionally say we just you know to broad brush for now it's very hard to remember to love people sometimes and that shows its way in conversation to where I find myself doing this very same thing. A lot of the time that I have to catch myself on where you're talking to someone, but you're only talking to them for as long as you have to, before you can get on to your next thing. And so 
you know, it's almost mm-hmm. like that is way too deep of a question for me to spend time on right now. I got somewhere to be. And so, you know, I I think part of it may just be, you know, the willingness to engage or the, you know, maybe not even understanding that we're not engaging as much with people when we're talking to them, like Mm -hmm. really being intentional, like in hearing and not just, you know, thinking about what you're going to say next or thinking about which, where you're going to go. Like, you know, if there's a moment where the father has placed someone in front of you, um, you know, to be intentional with that person, like, and to mm-hmm. talk to them and, you know, totally side theory, but you know, that might be part of it. Okay. That's a, that's a good, that's a good point. Right. That is, is. I, I was going to say, and, and Daniel touched on it. Uh, I heard somebody say one time that uh, most people talk, uh, excuse me, most people don't listen. They think of what they're going to say next. Mm-hmm. So the entire conversation that you're having is just two people thinking of what they're going to say next and not really listening to what the topic is about. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think sometimes if we can solve that within ourselves, where you're actually listening to the conversation more than you're thinking of, well, what can my reply be? Then you can sometimes take away more of a lesson Mm -hmm. from what that person might said or learn more about that person. And, you know, depending on what the, the aspect might be. And it's interesting you talk about those, like taking that time or, those encounters where you you meet somebody and it kind of as you're moving from one place to another or you know and kind of get intersected that actually occurred to us last night uh specifically because of dave we'd gone down to uh the mall to do some shopping for uh our sister-in-law's birthday or my sister yeah our sister-in-law's birthday yeah uh, (laughs) yeah yeah. it's a long day Um, (laughs) yeah yeah what a week ryan it's my day yeah no, uh, <laughs> um, but anyway we uh we were leaving and it was dark outside and uh what was interesting is the way the whole day had played out is we would like go to one place and we'd have to stop to wait for one member of the group or go to another and stop to wait for another member of the group and everything and you'll see why this is important because as we're walking out the doors Dave's wearing this hat that says Yeshua on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, this very, very well-dressed gentleman runs out the door to Dave and is like, wait, 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 wait. What's his first thing he says to you, Dave? He's like, wait, Yeshua. As soon as I've been been programmed, like as soon as I hear that Yeshua, I'm like, all right, who, 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 who's uh, who's saying this? Because that's (laughs) usually that's a divine encounter. And then... He's like, hey, hey, you, you should like, and then immediately turn around and it's like this, again, well-dressed man and just comes down and says, I recognize that. I recognize who that is. And it was like, oh, and at that moment, everything worked. Like you said, it was just like, it felt like there was delay after delay after delay. And it was like, oh, we're supposed to talk to you. This is going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm so looking forward to this conversation. Exactly. And And had those delays not happened, we mm -hmm. wouldn't have been there at that point literal second to be walking mm-hmm. out the door as this gentleman was there mm-hmm. it was all timed perfectly and if you were focused on all the delays and where you had to be and being mad really about missed, that you could have you could have missed it right yes. and so that this, oof. yeah this, this guy missing and, something exactly mm-hmm. exactly this guy and his wife ended up being um their missionaries to bolivia oh. yep mm. Um, but they are aware of who Yeshua is and the appointed times, the feast and everything. And uh, so it was really cool to get to connect with them and, you know, all over a Yeshua hat. Yeah. All over just something as simple you as know? that. And like we talked about last week where uh, that filling up, it felt like that entire day, just just that, that bar of filling up just happened in that moment. It was cold outside. Didn't matter. We didn't care. We were having this amazing discussion. It was so cool. It, again, just still kind of that's still fresh. It still kind of just blows me away how that can just happen in a moment. So cool. So being intentional about uh, mm-hmm. divine appointments in our lives, mm-hmm. exactly, and, and understanding that uh, you know He puts somebody in our life uh, so that we can, you know, maybe it's for us, maybe it's for them, maybe it's for both. Mm-hmm. But if, uh, like you guys said. If all you're trying to do is uh, is think about what you're going to say next, you know, you're not going to learn anything. 
Mm. That's right. Mm -hmm. You're going to miss the divine appointment. And I think I think this is actually really relevant to our fifth question of you know what will be the outcome? Mm -hmm. What is the result of questions one through four? Yeah. And the reason that it's relevant is because if you get to question number five, what will the outcome be? And you don't know how to be intentional to spread it to people, then it's going to die with you. Mm. And therein lies where I'd like to go. Thank you very much for that segue. You're welcome. <laughs> A couple <laughs> of no weeks idea. ago. Yeah, we didn't even talk about this uh, as, <laughs> as normal. As normal. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we read through the the Torah portion of uh, Kai Sarah, of uh, the life of Sarah, and it starts out with that she died. So why is the Torah portion called the life of Sarah if it's about the death of Sarah? Mm -hmm. Hmm. It's about what's the results of the first four questions. So let me, let me read you something that I, I, I kind of put down today. This is one of my uh, going to be probably one of my thoughts for the day. Your life is revealed in your death. Yeah, absolutely. What I mean, you know, isn't this when we look at the life of Sarah? It, isn't it in her death that her life is really revealed? Mm -hmm. That it's about you know Abraham decide okay well we got to have a a, a a bride for Isaac and, and goes and finds and all these kind of things, you know. So much is revealed. I've been in ministry for um, longer than you guys have been alive. And, uh, you know, the, the fifth question is one of what will be the result, the results of the first four questions. Now, when you're in your 20s, like, you know, you guys, I think all of you are, are still in your 20s, aren't you? Dave's in his 30s. Okay, Dave, I, I thought maybe he had reached the point of maturity there, but <laughs> just kidding. Um, so, but I'm, I'm still, you know, I'm still twice your age, Dave. Uh, it, it's not something that most people in their 20s and 30s consider. Mm -hmm. But when you start to get up to where I'm at, uh, you know, next year I'll, I'm eligible for Social Security. <laughs> uh, um, no wonder I'm tired. <laughs> but uh, you, know, you start to consider that more. Mm -hmm. uh, you start looking back and thinking about, you know, okay, what is going to be the result of what I've done? Mm -hmm. Am I really leaving anything behind that is going to be carried on? Mm -hmm. um, and, and this is something that I, I, I personally wish that I had spent more time on this when I was your age than I am now at my age, because mm. I think I would have probably made a lot of different decisions. You know, what's popping in my head right now is um, I think there's a lot of positive things to be associated with an inheritance. Um, you know, we can all work very hard to create an inheritance, whether it be physical or spiritual. Mm -hmm. Um, or even emotional, I would say, you know, I think the, you know, the, the scientific studies back that up that, you know, our, our emotional habits do get passed down to children and grandchildren. And so, you know, we can focus a lot of time on those things, but in the end, an inheritance can be defined into, and it can be captured in, you know, a box essentially, like this is your inheritance of money. This is your mm -hmm. inheritance of land. You know, this is the inheritance that, you know, we saved, uh, you know, that we, uh, in the father, you know, that kind of thing. What cannot be contained in a definition is a legacy. Mm. And when, when, when I think of the word legacy, I think of the thing that goes on, the thing that keeps growing and the thing that keeps multiplying. And then I think inheritance and, and legacy probably work together to some extent. But, you know, that's really what we're talking about. And I've been very blessed to be surrounded by people who are eternally minded. Um, because, you know, when you think about like, you know, live life on purpose, like, yeah, I, I want to do that. Live my life on purpose. But your life is going to end. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when your life that you lived on purpose ends, you know, what what is the statement you made to the world? What is the effect that you had on the world? You know, is it one that dies with you or is it one that keeps going and keeps growing yeah that's very good 
That's very good. It's interesting to me to throw this out there, and I mentioned this earlier this week in conversation with somebody, I forget who I was talking to, but um, I've noticed a trend just in society, even in the, in the physical realm. Mike, you touch on it when you talk about purchasing a physical Bible, mm -hmm. reading that physical Bible daily, making notes in it, you know, dog earing the pages if you have to, of verses that mean a lot to you, so that when you, when you pass away, that legacy is left behind, that those that come after you can pick up that Bible and see what's important to you, right? Yeah. I'll give another example. I have my granddad's watch, right? Time was important to him, and it's something that was passed down to me, very important to me. I'll never let go of it. And one day my children will inherit it and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. That's another thing, you know, everybody, we, we got the Apple Watch. Great piece of technology. You can't pass it down to your kids, right? Uh, no fault to the, uh, the rubber rings, uh, the wedding rings, right? Uh, when, you, when you, you know, work in construction or tree work or landscape or whatever, that's great. But are, is your, are your children, my, my dad has my granddad's wedding ring the symbol of the covenant between him and his wife. Now we've, you know, I see everybody with the, the rubber rings. And so, yes, these are material things. And we're talking about the spiritual things on this podcast. But I'm starting to see in our society that the outside, the physical, is starting to mimic the spiritual. Mm. We live in a throwaway world. Everything is is throwaway. As soon as it gets old, it, it, and, and things are no, they're not built to last anymore. Oh yeah. And I feel like that that has permeated so much of our fabric of society, and has has damaged it to a mm -hmm. great extent. And so I would I would challenge the listener. I challenge myself this every day to to do things and be about the things that last. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that matter. Relationship building relationships that will last. I was, right. I, if yeah. I could chime in right there, Ryan, that's I, you're talking about the material that how these material things last. But with online social media, as much as they're great tools, as much as they're great advancements. I think Mike has had some wonderful little uh, commentaries during his teachings about Facebook and, and being a friend to your car wash or something along those lines that you yes. said that was a, that was a, that was kind of a interesting way of looking at. It. And I think that, that was something that does make you think about that because it, and you mentioned it, that cheapening of relationships that actually occurs where now if someone has a, a, a we've I've seen it too many times, I'll talk to one group of people and then another group of people, then the next year, I can't imagine you as a teacher, Mike, as you've traveled around, you see the same thing, one group to the other group, and then next year, they're not talking to each other. It's like, why? And then, oh, well, da, 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 name off a bunch of reasons. And you're like, you realize that's actually really not a big deal, right? Like, it's really not a big deal. Like, if you really look back at it, it's just someone's pride is really getting hurt or multiple people's mm -hmm. pride is getting hurt. Yeah. And it's like, it's really so simple. We could actually have a deeper relationship, but that, that thing that's what I'm looking at is relationships. They haven't, they're sometimes they're getting cheaper and cheaper. And it's like, I don't want that. I want to have that. I want to keep going for that. And I was challenged at Zakot about relationships and about the people that I loved a lot. And it was like, wow, I needed to do better at that. And it made me realize I needed that these people are, there's only one kind of person like that. And I need to keep fighting for it and to keep that relationship alive and not just let it just go. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you were talking about there. And I was like, you know what? That's something that goes back with this. These relationships, they're a part of our journey. We have to keep striving for those reasons why they come on into our lane, I guess you would say, the yeah. path as we're traveling. They come into our lane for a reason it might not be in, revealed like you talk about Sarah the reason why she had all these th these confrontations and people in her life led to the ultimate result of what she became everyone thought she was going to be barren for the rest of her life that she would never have children god had other plans 
right towards the end of her life. She had to wait all those years. That's what baffles me, right? That's what gets me. She had to wait all those years and still have some sort of trust and faith that God was going to do what he said he was going to do, <laughs> right? To hold on to that fraction of something is just blows my mind. So yeah. Hey, the, I can't imagine. I mean, you know, I think about Abraham and Sarah and, uh, you know, here's here's a couple that's in their 90s, uh, late 90s, and they're having children. Uh, Daniel and Kate came over last uh, yesterday afternoon with the four children. Uh, when they left, I went to bed. Okay, <laughs> It was like, I'm done. I'm tired. And watching Kate be, you know, she at the moment she sits down, she hears mom. And it's like, you know, it, she looks like a spring. Uh, <laughs> because she, she sits down and just bounces back up. And I was, I, I'm exhausted just to, you know, and I'm thinking Abraham and Sarah were over 30 years older than me. That was oh, crazy. Uh, a couple of things, uh, you know, the, the physical stuff. Okay. Inheritance. Uh, it's amazing. And I know this because I've had uh, inheritances given to me. It's amazing how the financial part goes away so fast. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. mean, it it just kind of like flies out the window, no matter how careful you are. But it's the physical things. And see, behind me, these shelves, Daniel's been up in my office, uh, behind me on these shelves is my life. These are things that I can go back to. And uh, in fact, uh, Ruben and, and Phineas like to come up and I've got a Jeep that somebody gave me when I was in the army. I've got an old Greyhound bus that's, you know, that, that's from the 1950s that they like to come up and roll around. And, you know, these are things that they're bonding. Uh, but this is, this is my life that's behind me. And these are things that I, I probably, you know, I, I hope one day I can pass on. Uh, but I, I want to go to one word here and this, and I'll turn back to you guys. Um, Daniel, you mentioned the word legacy. Mm -hmm. I had the amazing privilege to uh, go up to uh, the funeral for Barry Phillips' dad, Charlie. One of the great regrets of my life is that we were up there, Kathy and I were up at, uh, at with Barry at Sukkot a few years ago. And Barry said, you know, we've got a couple of options. We're in the area. We could go over to my mom and dad's house. And you can meet them, we can spend some time, or we can go out and do some, you know, some shopping at little stores and antique stuff and, and things like that and grab some lunch and, you know, maybe, maybe a winery or something like that. We chose the latter. It was less than a year ago, less than a year after that, that Charlie Phillips died. And I never got to meet him. I, I, I said to Barry, I said that one of the regrets of my life will be that I never took the time to go over and ask your father to pray for me. Oh. Um, mm. I went to the funeral and people were, were throwing around the word um, legend. Mm. And then Barry got up and said, or you know, it, it might not have been Barry, it might have been somebody else that got up and said, Charlie Phillips was not a legend. He will not leave a legend behind. He will leave a legacy behind. Mm. You know, a legend's about you. Yes. A legacy is about what you've given to others that carries on. Oh, yeah. That's mm. right. Yeah. And it. You know, I don't think anything really uh, prepares us for like how to understand that or how to how to go about that. But it's just kind of one of those things you have to you have to spend a lot of time grasping it. And I think I think the more you walk through life and the more you kind of understand things. Like I know that as as I've gotten older, um, being a parent and then realizing you know, what you and mom went through to, to raise us and all that kind of stuff, you know, that's definitely something that has helped me understand legacy and helped me understand like just time and, you know, just all these things. And it just, it, it's so hard to, you can't really teach someone the importance of a legacy. I don't think 
you know, you can tell them all about it, but until you, until you like grasp eternity in that way, like until mm-hmm. you grasp that we are, we are spiritual, eternal beings walking through a temporal life. Like until you grasp that to some extent, like you just don't understand how important the choices we make are. And I think that's, that's one thing I wanted to mention about our question tonight of what will be the results? You know, what is the outcome of questions one through four? And it's the only question of the five that can't be answered. Like we don't know the outcome. We don't know how this all ends. All we know is that based on our answers to questions one through four, that those answers can affect who we are. It can change how we walk. It can change who we are. It can, and it can help us to make better choices mm. because that's all it comes down to. You know, we're all walking through life. We all have things that are happening to us and around us and, you know, things that we are causing to happen. And all we can do is use the first four answers to make our choices better mm-hmm. and to make our choices make a legacy. I like what you said, like having those questions, if you can answer those four in a way that you change the outcome of the fifth, because it's the question that's going to linger with you the rest of your life. What mm-hmm. trail are you leaving behind? What legacy leaves behind? I, all I think about is that scripture. It says, who, he who places himself first will be last. Mm-hmm. It's that, that whole entire idea is that he's already, God's already giving you the answer to the, how to have the best outcome for that fifth question that you're going to have for yourself. He already gives you the, he gives you a hint, a massive hint. If you do this, you'll, you'll see, you'll see something. And all I could think about is we were, we were having that conversation just a little bit ago about when people were either at their funerals or something like that, that's ultimately where that fifth question is going to be answered. The unfortunate Mm, thing is you're not going to be there to witness it. That's what's crazy is you're not going to witness the Mm. answer to that question. And it's like, ow. But all you can do is affect what will be the outcome of that question. I, if, I think that that's what I'm gathering from this. And I look at it and go, wow, I think that there's been weeks I've woke up, I, like start the week and it's like, all right, what am I going to accomplish this week? What, what's the goal? Not just work-wise, but what am I going to try to go for here? What am I looking for here? Am I gonna, is, is there going to be an appointment where I need to talk with somebody this week and I need to be ready on my toes? Like, just like yes, last night, it's so fresh. It was last night that someone just yelled out, hollered out to me. And it was like, I knew that that was something that it was, God was in, in, intertwining my path with this other gentleman's life. And it's like, mm-hmm. how many times are, we could have multiple in a week or maybe our mindset's so clouded with where we're at personally that we don't look for that opportunity that where we're going to leave a legacy behind. We're so focused on, uh, I think I, that self kingdom building that we forget that there's a bigger kingdom being built. That, mm-hmm. that kind of hurts. I'm thinking about myself right now. That's kind of hurts. <laughs> Ryan, what are you looking up there? Uh, well, I was looking at, uh, at Proverbs. Uh, I've been kind of led before the, we got on the show uh, to Proverbs 21. Um, trying to find it here the elusive verse when you're looking for it <laughs> yeah right uh, exactly I, that, but I, know, I can't find it <laughs> i like 21 21 it says he that followeth after righteousness and mercy findeth life righteousness and honor mm. that's a legacy yeah. right there mm. right there you go. oh man it's so it's almost like it's almost like what what legacy you are following is the one that le- you leave behind like we're almost just you know, that. we are, I like we, that. Are, we are, we are conduits as we walk through life of what we mm-hmm. follow. You know, we follow Yeshua, we follow righteous people that have gone before mm-hmm. us and we just become conduits to the next people to keep walking. So the legacy mm-hmm. we leave is his legacy. All right. We mm-hmm. can end the show there. I like that. Yep, that's that's good. it. That's, that's the one. Daniel, Daniel. <laughs> <Nathan. No. laughs> yeah. Except for I, got a twist last here. Week, so I had to. Yeah. All right. Uh-oh. Okay. I got a crazy twist. Coming. And uh, this just this just came to me, and uh, as as you guys were talking about this, it seems like to me as I look back over numerous people that I've seen in life and I've you know followed ministries and pastors and 
you know, and, and all kinds of people. The enemy never gives up trying to thwart and ruin your legacy. Mm-hmm. And in fact, I'd like to submit to you that the closer that you come to the end of your life, the more he will do to try to ruin that legacy. Mm-hmm. Um, someone, I was, in, I was discussing this with someone mm-hmm. many years ago, that the Levites actually were told they're, they're the only, that's the only place that retirement is found in scripture. It's the retirement American style is not a uh, scriptural thing. But the Levites were to retire from their active service at age 50. But then from that point on, they were to pour into other people's lives. Um, I've seen ministries, ministers, pastors that have stayed in the active role of ministry longer than they should. Mm. Instead of backing out a little bit. You know, we see that maybe today we could see that in politicians. You know, we've got these people running for speaker of this and speaker of that and 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 leader of this and that. And they're, you know, I mean, they're older than dirt. Right. It's <laughs> like at some point in time, why don't you say, you know, I would love to to see one of these um these these Congress critters uh stand up and say, you know, guys, I've been around here since Noah. <laughs> and uh, it's time for me to take a step back, and I'd like to throw my support behind this person, and I'd mm-hmm. like to help them to be raised up into this job. Where's that? Where's that? That's right. Yeah. Nowhere. And, and and it's in those last years that people blow it because mm-hmm. they forgot to, and this is why. You guys have heard me over and over and over again, as I've said to youth, don't let anyone, and I, I talked to Brad Scott about this and, and before he died, and, and Brad said, he said, Mike, you, you're on to something here. Youth, young people, do not let anyone mm-hmm. call you the next generation. Yep, that's right. The rising generation. And that's what this program's about. You know, yes. here, here's the little secret yeah. for me. This program is about me putting my life into these other three guys. Mm-hmm. Period. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. We're honored to be a part of your legacy, Mike. <laughs> oh. Yeah. You know, it's it's so interesting that you say that all that, though. You know, I think it's it's not hard to look and find someone who, you know, they die and then all this stuff comes out about them, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, like, like a minister. And then all of a sudden you're realizing, oh, they were doing a lot of different things that were very unholy in, in, in their travels and all this stuff. And so, you know, it's not something, you know, we can't, we don't have control over what people say about us now or after we die but we do have control over influencing enough people to where enough people will say no that's not true they were not like that you know just living living above reproach and living living in such a way that no one believes it yeah I think that's something that I've noticed as uh, joining you guys is like a dirt, especially during revive, some of the, some of the my fondest memories, <laughs> being able to listen, like we just talked about listening to where, where some of these people are at, or some of you young guys are at, where young ladies are at, like listening to where you guys are going through and being able just to give just a, a nugget, if anything, because you're it never the same situation, but sometimes the same answer can still work and to just Say, hey, this is just go here because your life's different than what I'm going to leave behind. I want you to run to the Father to just glimpse that idea that He is your God and your King, and that, like you talked about, like that idea of learning to step out, 
sometimes it had takes the, the the tool required is something more intimate something more connected and being a part of the individual's life and then starting to realize that there's some people i have to now let go to say you gotta run and you gotta go don't mm -hmm. don't look to me don't look to me don't ask me you run you already know who to talk to talk to him because he's going to give you a way better answer than i'm going to give you an answer for so that's something where you got to learn to step back also is that place of don't put yourself mm -hmm. in front put yourself in the last seat wow and i've i've heard I, I don't know this for sure, but I've I've heard that um, you know as far as like the steps to uh, people recovering from addictions, like there's this final step that's not written into the official, you know, you know the acknowledgement and the recovery, mm -hmm. you know, all this stuff. There's that final step of, you know, if you don't perform this one, you're not going to succeed. And that last step is to help someone else recover. Mm -hmm. And I think the same would hold true for you know someone who you know, maybe when you started this podcast, you didn't even know which questions to ask, or maybe you knew the answer to the first one, or maybe, you know, you've been walking through this with us and you're just starting to understand what the answers to these questions are in your life. And I would say to everyone who has been blessed by it or to ha who has been able to answer some of these questions or start to, when you get to the point where you have them answered of who are you and what, uh, where are you from and what have you been given and what are you going to do with it? Um, help someone else mm -hmm. find these answers, you know, because it's going to, it's going to help you rise up even further and you're going to be bringing them along with you as well. See, the, the, the thing is that you're never too young to start pouring into somebody's life. Yeah. Yeah. You know, why is it that right. the the firstborn in scripture is given a double a double portion mm. because that firstborn has such an influence and the studies are show uh that the some some people i know that have actually looked into this that if the firstborn if you have numerous children in a family if the firstborn is is leading a righteous life then the rest it it is probable that the rest of the children will too mm -hmm. but if that firstborn is rebellious it will then pass over into the rest of the children so you're never too young mm -hmm. to begin this this rising up process this legacy building into other people's lives and, and when we talk about legacy it's not about us okay you know when i said i you know i'm wanting to pour in, into you guys it's not about me it's about what others have poured into me. I don't want what Dr. Miles Monroe poured into me, what John Faust, what, uh, you know, my grandmother. I don't want that to just stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want it to move through me and mm -hmm. in other people's lives. So this, this, this concept of never thinking you're too, you're, you're too young. I, you know, Daniel, like I said, Daniel was over with the kids last night and, um, I, I'm watching Reuben, his firstborn, and I'm watching Phineas, the second child, and then Irene, and, and now Peter's too young to do this, but whatever Reuben does, Phineas does. Phineas didn't want hot sauce on his uh, bean <laughs> soup last night until Reuben wanted some hot sauce on his uh, bean soup, yeah. and all of a sudden- And then Irene, here, me too. Yeah, then, then Irene, me too. <laughs> And so everybody's got their hot sauce on their soup. And I'm sitting back going, this is crazy. Okay, but this is why for, for parents, uh, for grandparents, as I am one, uh, it, make sure that you spend, because that child is given a double responsibility, which is a double inheritance, spend double time, mm. understanding that their life is 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 of greater importance in a way because they're going to set the standard so spend mm -hmm. more time with that child and then watch it flow through the others yep yes yeah i i've found that to absolutely be true and you know it's it's not that i have to necessarily spend more time with rupin right now but i've noticed that because we we spent such time with him when it was just him that it almost happened naturally where mm -hmm. 
you know, we were just, we were really, really intentional. I mean, we've tried to be intentional with all of them, obviously, but, you know, when it was just him, like, you know, we weren't, you know, just uh, taking advantage of the fact that we only have one kid and still, you know, doing all, I don't know. I mean, we don't really, we're not very much fun anyway. We don't really go to, you know, <laughs> exciting places or whatever. Yeah, you but, got that from your dad. <laughs> I'm no fun. But, we were just really intentional to to spend a lot of time with him, read a lot of books to him, you know, answer all of his questions, you know, read the scriptures over him and all this kind of stuff. And we've just found that it it really has happened naturally where he really does just grasp things and it, his personality helps too for sure. You know, he is he is a firstborn through and through. Yeah. Um, but it's it's really amazing to watch how how intentional he is now with his siblings. That's good. Yeah, you hit on a point there, uh, Mike, with time. That's the cost of leaving a legacy. Is your, it, it is your time, what you spend your time with, doing and with. There was a, a very successful businessman I saw. I think it's kind of a popular clip, I guess, right now, you know, YouTube and other media platforms. And he was asked, he said, if right now you lost your business and you had to start over from scratch, how quickly do you think you could do it? And the guy stopped him in the interview and he said, first of all, let's, let's talk about that word quickly. Hmm. He said, quick is, is the devil. I want to see how slowly and solidly I can build it. Not quickly. Hmm. Wow. And in this day yeah. and age, uh, I don't agree with everything this man says, but I, I thought that was pretty profound because in this age, everything is instant. Everybody wants everything quickly. I order it now. I want it tomorrow, mm -hmm. you know, or the same day, preferably, you know. Um, you want to back up on that one, go to Israel and ask for fast food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh, can I, I want to jump in on what you just said there, Ryan, because I was like, when you're talking about, like, we're talking about firstborn, I'm a firstborn, and I understand that there is a heavier price uh, when you're dealing with your siblings. I only had one sibling still. I knew that I was responsible, especially I, my parents would say, hey, you're responsible for me. Hey, you're responsible. So I knew that I had that extra layer that you have to deal with. And I wanted to speak to any of the uh, uh, maybe firstborns out there, or you find yourself just attracting people, and you have no idea why may have that just kind of natural ability who knows that time thing that we're just talking about this time thing of well i want things back quickly i want to get food quickly i want to get things instantly mm -hmm. people don't work like that you can't change somebody on a dime you can't change you can't flip the switch and someone changes yeah. god's the only one that can do that as far as i know that's the only person who can actually change someone's trajectory instantly you are in charge of just nurturing that's, a, that's all you're in charge of is nurture, is to, if you see where they're at and you see encouragement is the most powerful way of being able to push someone in a, in a that direction. That encouragement goes so far. I cannot tell you how many times just the smallest bits of encouragement. And so I want to encourage you to continue to encourage because it's amazing. Just a little bit of encouragement will do. Just the most, the littlest encouragement, find good things and just keep bringing them. That's to me, the way of continuing to push that rising generation, that's you guys. Mm -hmm. That's it's you guys. Keep pushing just to get better. Keep pushing to look for those opportunities and taking them, seizing them. Like you talked about, don't ever let someone uh, wait to wait your turn. Seize it, run for it, grab it, mm -hmm. just run for it. Don't wait. Don't wait for your parents to give you a permission to go and then do what you're calling is run with it. Just go. Don't wait for that. Just run with it. And I guess for some reason, I guess is what I'm looking at there. You know, with this, this rising thing, there, there's also a part of it that is responsibility on the on the person that's that's kind of giving themselves into someone else. Okay, uh, as, as you guys are, as we're kind of, you know, my mind just kind of runs all over the place. And uh, I actually, as as one teacher talks about, uh, I do have a nothing box in my brain, but I can multitask in it, which is really strange. Uh, but that's another subject. Um, you know, when we start pushing or, or when we start putting into another person's life, don't put more on them 
than in, they than you should. Mm-hmm. It's also is about allowing them to mature on their own and not you know not giving them more than they should. Uh, I yeah. remember when my mother and father divorced. I was eight years old, and uh, people would come up and say that this. Now that I'm thinking about it, this was one of the dumbest things I've ever heard in my life, and and I it just kind of dawned on me. At eight years old, they would come up to me and say, well, you know, now that your dad's out of the house, you're the man of the house. I'm eight years old. Mm -hmm. You know, really? What does that mean? I don't know what that, uh, huh? Mm. And and so it was this, un. there's no way to fulfill that. Mm -mm. So we got to use wisdom in like the firstborn is, is, you know, as Reuben is 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 pouring his life into the other children it's daniel's responsibility to then direct that so he's not doing it you know doing too much at one time yeah and i think the um kind of the council and acts is a good example of this because you know they the whole scene of like you know these these four things are what you should be focusing on right now. Like, yeah. you know, don't eat the food sacrificed to idols, you know, and, and it lists the four things. I can't remember what chapter it's in, but it's essentially the um, the picture of it is you have people coming into, you know, the way, you know, following Yeshua mm-hmm. out of out of, you know, being a Gentile or being a pagan and you know all the these apostles got together and they were like okay what what should they do you know because they were realistic they knew that you can't take a pagan and then just drop them into you know a messianic group or something like that or or, you know it's there's a there's a purifying process that you have to go that you have to go through there's there's a mental process you have to go through there's it, it takes steps. And so I just like, I like what you're saying there where you just can't give them too much because, you know, I think it really, it really plays into the instant thing that we're talking about, like in our day and age, but it's just not how it works. You know, it is, it is a process. You have to let someone walk through the process and understand that if someone makes mistakes in their process between getting saved and, you know, finding out who they are or, you know, anywhere in this process, like that's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. If you make a mistake between point A and B, it's part of the process. Good counsel. That's Absolutely. I like that. By the way, let, let me throw this in and now turn it over to you guys. Uh, there was actually, there was, I think it's actually chapter 15. Uh, there's actually not four requirements. There's actually five. The fifth one says, and they will, and and is not the Torah of Moses taught in the synagogue every Shabbat? Mm. So there's the process you were talking about, Daniel. Mm. Right. The attendance, the yeah. intentionality, walking into mm-hmm. community. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Or maybe even uh, submitting, surrendering yourself to counsel. Yeah. That now you have to listen. Now you got to start walking, working out your faith. Mm. Amen. Yeah. That's good. So let, let's let's try to wrap this up a little bit. We got just a few minutes. Um, I can tell you how to find. Uh, I, I can pretty well, in most cases, um, tell you if a person has figured out the first four questions in their life, and it happens on a very specific day of their life, which is called their death. Mm that I've seen many, you know, in the South, we have this thing, you guys are acquainted with it, and it used to be more, much more than it is now. Uh, when I was growing up, you didn't just, you know, in the South, we, if you see a funeral procession, you stop your car. Now, if you go, into, you go to California or up North, people run over you when you do that. But when I was growing up, it was a absolute, you did that. You, you stopped your car and many people would get out of the car and would stand there in respect to the dead. Mm-hmm. That's something that I think if, if, if we got back to that is a society would change our society within moments. Mm-hmm. 
but I can tell you the way a person has lived their life by how many cars are following their dead body. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Well, that thudded. <laughs> it, that one has to sit and sink in. It has to marinate a little bit. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a sobering thought. I think it that's something that's sobering because I think how many times have, I, I, I'll say, how many times have you seen that? And there's still some people here that will do that. But we have been uh, a lot of other people from other parts of the country that have been coming in and they don't have that same idea. And that's something to think about. Or walking through a graveyard right sometimes that's something else right there wow all the tombstones in that uh thing that you say mike that really uh that really uh, was uh, blew my mind was the uh dash mm -hmm. um, birth date and date your your life becomes it's the dash between two dates mm -hmm. uh you know and how we respect those who have died and i know it's just you know it's just the shell and all yeah i, I got all the junk okay I've heard, I think I've heard most everything usually two or three times. Uh, again, when I was growing up, I'd go to the cemetery with my grandmother and uh, Granny was always about uh, making sure that there was flowers on the, on the grave. And she'd go, it was artificial ones, you know, of course, but we'd go to pick and save, uh, which was kind of like a, a uh, that was cross between Big Lot and Walmart. Uh, we go to big to pick and save, and she'd get these artificial flowers, and I'd go with her in the car to uh, the cemetery, and she'd put this, you know, she'd go to the graves of the loved ones, and she'd want to put these uh, these flowers on. But as I was walking through the cemetery, she taught me at a very young age, never step on top of the body. Mm -hmm. You always walked around. You never, you know, you never just stood right in front of the tombstone. You always kept to the side. You never placed your feet on top of where that body was. And that's just respect, guys. Because if we're not showing respect to the dead, we'll never show respect to the living. Mm. That's right. Mm. That's exactly right. Well, that's something that I think about. That's something that always gets me. Uh, at our Sukkot gatherings, we'll always read the entire book of Deuteronomy. And I think that that's a pretty cool uh, little tradition, I guess you would say. And that's what always gets me every time. It actually chokes me up ever. I can't, I can't not choke up is to when it gets to that final chapter of Moses and it talks about Moses, then 120 years old now, climbing up to the top of the mountain and they raise his eyes and this is where you'll rest with your fathers. And then no one knows to this day where he was buried or whatever like let the theories run doesn't matter it's that idea that this guy was what he went through his entire life but i guarantee in a moment of his life in those certain moments he never ever imagined what god was actually going to do with him never imagined never for once and i would challenge you that you might think that you're just the most lowly does not know something could something that big could happen to anyone it's just what god decides what he chooses and are you going to be willing to surrender to his discretion, his direction, right? Because he didn't, Moses could have seen the burning bush and just kept on going. That, huh, interesting, just kept on walking. But no, he knew that there was destiny was what was burning in that bush. He had to go. He had to see what that was about. And the rest is history, right? That was there with him the entire way. I, you're saying all this and it's like that. And I don't know if there's there's not a lot of people that can come up to that that level of like Moses other than our Messiah, right? Other than that, that his dash is pretty deep, pretty deep from start to end. Legacy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Closing thoughts, guys. Ah, goodness. Um <laughs> It's been a heavy one for sure. It's yeah. about to say it's been sobering. And I would, I just, no matter what your testimony is, right? Everyone's got one. I think that's something that was really impressed on my heart from this is that your testimony is a super strong part of your life. I want you to, whoever's listening, I want you to grab hold of it. I don't want you to shriek away from it that, and, and don't you dare compare your testimony to other people. Don't yeah. do that. Amen. Your testimony that's is right. to you and you alone. 
Yeah. And I can listen to it, a thousand testimonies. It does nothing but lift up my spirit. And I want to, whoever is listening out there, your testimony is, is a part of that gift. We talked about a couple weeks of that gift that God's given you. Um, you need to submit yourself into it and use it because this is a part of the legacy that you are. This is the dash that's being dug in between your start date and your end date. Sorry, you're going to have an end date you got to keep pushing forward and your testimony is a part of that no matter how simple it is or extravagant it is it doesn't matter you got to keep pushing you got to keep fighting for it because this is what you're trailing behind what we're what we're talking about here is going to be a part of something for how long i don't know it's the same thing with you guys listening that testimony is something that's going to be so such a rock for you because that's what messiah did for you and what he's going to continue to do through you. And guess what? Your testimony is never done. It's never over. There's always something else that's going to come up. So I want to encourage you, no matter if you're out there thinking this way or looking at it, be encouraged. You're going to be even, it's going to be even better than you could ever expect. That's all I want to leave you with. That's good. It's mm. very good. Okay. You got something, Brian? Uh, I think uh, for me, like we talked about, be good, be about that legacy, be about the things that, that last, that matter, be about the kingdom, spend your time pouring into others. And uh, the final thing from one of my favorite movies, it, I, I don't know why this, this poem had come to mind while I was listening to you speak, uh, Mike. And it says, do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Mm -hmm. Pretty prof profound. As you said, as we get older, sometimes yeah. we can forget or, or lose our, our legacy or throw it all away. Let us not go calmly into that, but persevere ever on. With boldness. Exactly. Got that. Daniel? You know, this has been a... I think a really powerful series, um, you, you know, I don't think we always, at least most of us think frequently about how important it is to ask the simple questions of who am I and where am I from and all these things. But um, I hope that whoever has listened to this mini series within this podcast um, has been extremely blessed by it. I really hope that you to understand more who you are and where you came from and what God has gifted you. And, you know, it's just, it's just a prayer that you find who you are because, man, when you get these four questions answered and under your belt and that you develop the confidence, not the arrogance, but the confidence that comes directly from the throne room of God from where you were conceived in his heart, in his mind, before you came into this world. Mm -hmm nothing will stop you. You will change the world because we are called to change the world. 12 people after Yeshua absolutely turned the world upside down. And God calls each of us to do that still today. There you go. That's right. So if you're breathing, if you woke <laughs> up this morning, understand yeah. this. He take. has plans for you for mm -hmm. good and not for evil to give you a future and a hope. So live your life on purpose. See you again next week. Amen. Take care, guys. See you guys. Take care. Yeah. You alone hear my every prayer. You're the God who's always